So now in this video, we come back to my pulse circuit, but we uh, modified it a little bit and we changed the load. Now we have an inductor that we're gonna turn into a simple uh, voltage booster right there. So I'm gonna use uh, this multimeter here. It's not auto ranging. We're gonna set a voltage where only two volts is the lowest setting. So I gotta go up to 20 volts right there, but uh, we're actually gonna get close to uh, 20 volts. I don't have to move the red probe unless we're doing high current and uh, I believe you move the uh, black probe if you're measuring uh, capacitance but uh, any case um, you know check uh, your uh, instruction manual if uh, you got a meter kind of like that where it does weird stuff so in any case we have uh, five volts right there I'm not using the auto ranging uh, meter because when you got changing voltages auto ranging meter uh, takes forever to uh, show the voltage on the display but in any case we press the button doesn't matter how uh, long I press it voltage is going to go up uh, right there and I probably did a, a switch bounce where it pressed uh, more than once but in any case um, you want to really give this a series of uh, pulses and the pulse time isn't determined by how long I press the button but there you can see the voltage is going up right there and if I go uh, fast enough because it is discharging um, probably through the uh, the meter here I don't know how much uh, resistance it gives up uh, probably like a million ohms um, but in any case there you can see we raised the voltage we doubled the voltage right there that we charged the capacitor to so it's a simple uh, voltage booster but we don't even have a load here it's not uh, maintaining that uh, voltage you'd be better off buying a voltage booster uh, uh, module but uh, in any case it helps demonstrate the inductor and what it can do so now here is the schematic that I put together for this circuit. Um, recent videos we looked at this pulse circuitry right here. I'm using the same value capacitor, but lower value resistors all around. We want uh, quite a bit of base two emitter current, but we want to keep it very short. Um, whether or not these are the best values to use, I'm not worried about that uh, right now. We're not going to uh, try to perfect uh, this circuit. We just saw that we can take the uh, output here and get a higher voltage than what the input is that's the goal of this circuit just to prove that we can do so that inductors can do so again not the best inductor to do so um, but it's uh, one that I got um, a fairly large value that's uh, cheap right over there so in any case when the transistor is on the inductor uh, starts conducting current it takes a little bit of time but it's almost instantly when you turn the transistor off suddenly that current wants to keep flowing right there and thus it will flow through that diode and um, into the capacitor right there as you put more current into a capacitor its voltage goes up as we measured right there um, so we want to turn it on though but once current's flowing we don't want it to flow any longer than we have to um, so we did the pulse circuitry there I press the button we get that uh, current flowing but the capacitor will uh, charge so well a little bit of current's flowing a lot more will flow uh, that way um, but once the capacitor gets charged it stops that base to emitter current and stops the transistor from conducting and that's when you get your kickback working in here kicking a higher voltage into that capacitor so now we'll uh, take a closer look at the circuit there you got the switch so right now I'm not pressing it it's not connected when you press it it makes a connection right there we got a 100 ohm resistor come into the uh, capacitor right there and this will you know take away a little bit of current take out a little bit of the punch but uh, not much um, so yeah we got a, a 0.47 microfarad capacitor right there um, so that's our uh, setup right there. We press the button that makes that more positive this side more negative We release the button. We got two uh, 1000 ohm resistors there to discharge the capacitor pretty quick so we could use um, You know a much uh, faster uh, pulses right there We would build up uh, more voltage and be able to provide more current if we had a load um, But in any case, that's what we have here. This is to discharge the capacitor. This is to charge the capacitor once the capacitor is charged, it's going to be steady state. Uh, it's not going to take any more current. And uh, when we release the button, again, it's going to discharge. That doesn't affect the transistor. It just helps hold it off. Um, but in any case, um, it will uh, discharge again pretty quickly right there. So I already talked about what the transistor does when it's on and off. So the inductor right there, we'll look at the uh, actual components. And this one is in between the uh, base there and the emitter. For the NPN bipolar junction transistor. I'm using a 2N3904 if you're actually going to try to get a uh, fair amount of uh, current you'd probably want to use a 2N2222 in its place 
um, but we're going pretty slow here. Um, so there'll be kind of short burst of current that may be more uh, than we desire with the transistor, but again, it, it may be okay. So um, I made this diagram a while ago. I hopefully made sure that uh, we never pass more than 200 milliamps of current. But uh, this has about 25 ohms of internal resistance. Uh, generally speaking, inductors don't have uh, resistance. You know, of course they got a little bit, you know, but they try to keep it down to almost nothing. These particular ones, they actually have about 25 ohms. So it does uh, limit uh, current, but keep that in mind. But yeah, there you can see positive over there. So now we got uh, the diode. This is to catch the energy. So the transistor is gonna turn on. There you can see uh, positive and negative. But when it cuts off, you know, the uh, quicker it shuts off, the better. Then uh, current's gonna keep flowing for a bit into the capacitor. Its voltage is gonna rise. So you can see the uh, cathode right there, that gray band. This side's the anode right there. That lets current go this way, but not uh, that way right there. And uh, we can come over here and take a look at that uh, right there. As I said before, current goes through the inductor, cut off the transistor, it keeps going for a bit while well, that magnetic field collapses. Magnetic field builds up while well, current is allowed to flow, and then it collapses when it pushes uh, the current. It pushes the current while the magnetic field is collapsing. Once it's completely collapsed, uh, current stops. Um, but it's gonna keep that current flowing. It's gonna raise the voltage as needed to do so. And thus, if the capacitor is, uh, well, the capacitor will be at a lower voltage because it's gonna push current into the capacitor no matter what the capacitor voltage is. Um, so, you know, in this case, uh, I set the meter to 20 volts. We would have had to stop at 20 volts. This particular capacitor, I'm guessing it can handle 50 volts, maybe 100 volts. Um, but uh, any case, um, you got to stop this process before the capacitor overcharges. So just be aware of that. And if you really need a voltage booster, buy a module. Don't make a circuit yourself. Um, you know, maybe you can make a good one, but it's it's not going to be easy. Um, voltage booster module. You can get an OK one uh, for a dollar that can handle like you know about a dollar, dollar, two dollars that can handle about an amp of current. So yeah, we'll look at uh, this capacitor. Um, Probably need to move the lamp there to get the uh, light better, I'm hoping, and uh, maybe not. Maybe we won't be able to get a good look at this, uh, at least in this shot. But yeah, there you can see 50 volts and then 4.7 microfarad. Now, um, it's kind of hard to see that uh, decimal point right there, which is why, um, you know, uh, you might see like 4 uh, and then microfarad where that uh, decimal point is, and then 7, and that's why. A lot of times you take uh, the value there, microfarads, and put it where the decimal point is going because that's kind of hard to see right there. But you can't see it, uh, 4.7 with the loop. And we could go up to uh, 50 volts with this particular capacitor. So if we went fast enough, we could stop at, uh, you know, you probably don't want to push it to 50 volts, especially for long periods of time. That's its maximum. Um, but you can, you know, get up to uh, that high. So probably like 35 volts would be a good, like, starting, uh, stopping off point. Um, for uh, charging uh, these capacitors, these 50 volt ones. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, that's about all there is to the circuit. So, um, you know, hope you enjoy it. Again, we need a larger burst of current, so I got lower values right here. Um, these, you know, mostly help uh, to discharge the capacitor quicker. So we could use uh, like a 555 timer to send rapid uh, pulses. Um, but, uh, you know, you could put a 555 timer output there and um, you might not even, yeah, you would need these to uh, discharge it. But in uh, any case, um, we're not gonna worry about that. I did that in an earlier video where we did uh, this pulse circuit. So not gonna go over that again now, but hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.